let me go down to the bottom here and there's a folder that I've created that's called your last name underscore your first name and it's basically supposed to parallel the folders that you guys have. All right, You're not going to have access to this but I'm just going to show you this as a demonstration. So what you would do is you would go to the folder with your last name underscore your first name. So I'm going to do that. You see that it's empty for the first time. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and test out making some folders. Okay, So if you right click inside of here you can go where it says new folder and you give it a name. Now the name that I want you to use, this is something you're actually going to use for the class, All right, you're going to type in exercises. Make sure you spell this right. Sometimes people make typos. Later it's going to give you a headache if you misspell it here and then you're always trying to find the address when the address isn't spelled right. Okay, so type in exercises and hit create. Okay, and it might take a second to make it. Alright, so you're going to make exercises. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is right click and I want you to make a new folder called projects. Okay, now for this course everything that you do you're going to put inside of one of these two folders. All right. So if I go inside of exercises now I'm going to make another folder Okay, and we're going to call that exercise 1. Okay, No underscores or anything, all lowercase, exercise 1, all run together. Do not, do not, do not, do not put spaces in your file names or your folder names whenever you put them on the web. There's a reason for that and I'll show you later maybe if I have a chance before we run out of time what happens but basically it's going to convert a space into something that looks like a percent sign in the number 20. You don't want to do that okay so just don't use spaces in your names. Okay now exercise one this is where for instance you're going to put your your file for the first exercise and so on and you could sit here and continue to make new folders uh, or you can just make the folders correctly each time you go to upload your files. Okay, But I just wanted to show you this is going to be the basic structure of the uh, files and folders whenever you create stuff for this class. All right. So the next thing I want to show you really quickly is I want to show you something where we're going to have like a test file, okay? Just to throw it up here so you can see what happens and you can see how you can manipulate it. All right, so I have a little test file that I just created on my desktop. Um, and if you don't know how to do any of this stuff yet, right, because you're taking an HTML class for the first time, what you can do is on a Mac you can open up text edit or on a Windows computer you can open up Notepad, right, and just write some silly little thing. If you're in text edit, you can just type, you know, this is a test or something like that. It doesn't really matter what you type. And you're going to go to File, Save. Okay. And automatically it tries to save it in rich text format. Um, you can either save it as a normal text file or on this particular program, you can save it as a web page. If you're in WordPad, um, you can just save it as a text file. In fact, just to be consistent, I'll go ahead and hit cancel okay and I'm gonna make it just so that it's like what Windows users are gonna be facing um, and I'm gonna make it where I go to format and I say make plain text and then it strips all the formatting off of it so now if I go to save you'll see that I don't have those options for saving it out as an HTML file um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, save it as test dot text. So dot txt. And I'm going to save that just on my desktop. Okay. We'll go ahead and move that around over here. Alright, so what I can do now is I'm going to just throw that test dot text file by dragging it from my desktop and dragging it up into the server because we're just going to have a little test really quick. Okay, and you see what happens here is that it pops up with this, um, it's called a I can scroll down. It's called the uh, transfer uh, panel or browser and it shows you all of your transfers in uh, Cyberduck and that's kind of nice. If I wanted to upload the same file again, let's say I'd made some changes and I need to upload it one more time, I could just double click this and lo and behold 
it'll upload the file again and it's going to ask me do I want to overwrite that file and you could just say yes you know to continue and it'll overwrite the file again all right now what is this going to do all right first of all let's just see now that we've put our some you know our folders and a few things up on the web server let's see how we can actually view it on the web okay okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down I'm going to open Firefox a new browser window uh, or you could use Safari or Internet Explorer whichever and I'm going to type in the address mat.miracosta.edu slash and then what I'm going to do next is type our class one two, mat125 underscore online forward slash student work all one word now before we go any further I, w I want you to notice well first of all I want you to notice that I started to misspell Miracosta there we go and my history in my browser remembers this okay but before I hit enter I want you to notice something alright so first of all this is where the host name is now because that's the server that that's the servers host that we're connecting to now does this look familiar to you right remember whenever we went to our FTP server okay you see here it's going web slash mat125 online slash student work right okay so if you want to think about it where it says mat.miracosta.edu that's the same as that web directory okay and then the rest of the address corresponds to what we see up here so you see mat 125 underscore online and then student work and then you could go to your last name first name right but let's say that you don't want to type all that out if you just go to where it says student work hit enter what it does is it gives us a directory listing of all the students that are in that folder now be warned not all servers have directory listing turned on I've asked them to turn this on because this is an educational class and that way if you misspell something or you don't type the address exactly correct correctly um, then you'll still get something up here you can still find what you're looking for however on most servers like if you were to get server space with GoDaddy or Media Temple or one of those places most of those servers have directory listing disabled so and it's a security feature so if you were to try to access something that either was misspelled or didn't exist or whatever it wouldn't let you do it okay so first thing I want to do is go down where it says your last name your first name and you see here it's got those folders in that file that I created so let's just look at test.txt now even though this isn't an HTML file it's going to show the contents of it okay so that's something just so that you can test it without actually having to know HTML yet we can just look at this and make sure that it's actually up there and you can see the file structure and you can see how to get to your work okay and it shows you where you are and don't be confused by where it says <clears throat> excuse me where it says imt.miracosta.edu the IMT server is exactly the same as the MAT server they have two separate domain names that point to the same hosting space alright so now let's go ahead and I'm gonna minimize that and if we come back to cyberduck what you could do if you want to get rid of this test file is you can right click it and you can delete it like that it's going to ask you to confirm it you say yes okay something else that we can do now is uh, I'm gonna go ahead back to text edit alright where it says this is a test I'm gonna close this file and I'm gonna create a new file and don't worry if you can't do this on you know wordpad or something but um, I'm just gonna create something that's called or that says this is an index page okay now I'm gonna go ahead and file save as or just save whichever and on my desktop I'm gonna save it as index.html okay now and I'm gonna save it as web page format this is something that you can do in you know word too if you wanted to do this in word you could do save as a web page as well if you just want to make something it's like a really quick little test okay now what it's gonna do is it's gonna save it in an HTML format but by saving it with the name called index this is really critically important to understand uh, what it 
that's going to allow is for you to put that up in the directory and it's going to automatically find that file and open it whenever you just type the directory pathway. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's save it. Um, and you see here it named it index, all right, and it's an index.html file. If I drag this up here into my the root level of my student folder, okay, you see that the index file is up there. And now let's go back to our browser again, and I'm going to hit this refresh button. You can also do like Command R or Control R on a PC, okay? And you see what happened? My directory listing is gone. What happens whenever you have a file inside of a folder and the file is named index? If you just type the the path to the folder itself, all right? See how I don't have a file name specified out here? Then what's going to happen is it's going to automatically find the thing called index and it's going to load that. I refer to that as a gateway file. And so you want to make sure that if you have an index file in a folder, that it's not a folder th where you actually want to get the directory listing, all right? So this would probably be one of those cases where you really don't want to have an index file in your main directory because then you'll never be able to just go there on the web and sort of fish around and, and look for your files, okay? So let's jump back over here to FileZilla and what I'll do is I'll rename this index file by right-clicking on it and I'll click on rename and you can see here if I just say index X, okay? I just rename that. Now if I go back to the same folder and I click refresh, I get my directory listing again. And if I click that file, it says this is an index page. Okay? So that's really important to understand. Something, one really quick other thing too, is let's say that I did want to rename this back and I want to call it index again. Okay? Now the other thing I can do is I have just over here I have a, a test.html file as well. Okay. And if I I want to show you how even though there's an index file, if you know the name of the file that you're looking for, you can still access it. So let's go back here and I'm going to refresh it. All right, and it takes me back to that goofy index page again. Well, I know that I want to find that file called test. So I can type in test.html at the end of my pathway and it takes me to that page that says this is a test. Okay? So I just wanted to show you those few things um, before we continue on. And the next thing I want to show you really quickly is just, right, how to disconnect. Okay? And we should be done now with our tutorial. Um, one last thing real quickly though that I will mention is that now you should be able to go and uh, bookmark that connection. You can use that as a shortcut in the future like I showed you from the first screen of this uh, or the first frame of this video when it had all those bookmarks up there. Okay, let me know if you have any questions with uh, your connections and if you have any problems with the server.